Hello humanoids, welcome to Halfling Hobbies. I'm Halfling Hannah. We all know about forgery kits and thieves tools. Those are pretty much all our players take when we're asking them to take tools and proficiencies. But did you know that there are 22 types of tools that you can take in Dungeons and Dragons. And there are some of them that are pretty darn cool, that aren't the common ones that everybody takes. Today, I'm going to talk about five awesome tools that you've probably never heard of and what makes them so cool. Here we go. And Dungeons and Dragons are tools that players have proficiencies in based in their backgrounds and classes. Now the backgrounds themselves will tell players that they have a proficiency in a certain kind of tool or it will give them a choice of what tool they take. Oftentimes players will choose tools based on the background of their character that they are creating. And there are some really cool options that I think DMs and players should know about that aren't just your common poisoner's kit, herbalist kit, thieves tools and forgery kits that most people take. These tools actually have a far more practical use and can do some really interesting things that most people don't know about. So number one on my list, one of my favorites is cook's utensils. They only cost one gold piece to pick up a set of cook's utensils, and they may be the humblest of the D&D tools, but they pack a surprising punch. So the first few things that a cook's tools can do are really purely for flavor. No, but really, they're about flavor. So you can actually, with Cook's Tools, transform a medicine that is bitter to be something that is enjoyable. Um, I'm not entirely sure what you would use that for, but I'm sure you can come up with something. Another one is while foraging for food, while you're out and about adventuring, you can make do with things that other people wouldn't be able to. So if you get a really low uh, nature check when you're foraging for food, if you have someone with a proficiency in cook's tools, they can still use what you find as opposed to going hungry that day. And then finally, the reason why this is on the list as part of a short rest, if you have proficiency in cook's tools, you can create a tasty meal for your companions, which gives them plus one hit point per hit dice that they roll. Now, it's a small little bonus, but if you've ever been in dire situation, you know that every hit point counts. And so being able to roll five hit dice when you're extremely low and get an additional five hit points can be super useful, especially if you roll ones like I always do. Next up on our list, we have wood carvers tools. These are different than woodworkers tools and include creating fine details on things such as ruins on a wand or cool intricate designs on boxes. What's neat about this is that it gives you additional insight on trees. So if your players ever look at trees and wanna know anything about trees, this player's got you covered. The really cool thing about this is that a wood carver can, as part of a short rest, repair any wooden item. So if your cart happens to have a broken wheel, you just need to take a short rest and your wood carvers got you covered. Also, as part of a short rest, a wood carver can create arrows. If you are a DM who makes your players count their arrows and they are out on a long dungeon crawl, this can be a super, super big help to have someone in the party who can craft arrows. Before I go any farther, if you're wondering how I know all this stuff, it's because it's in Xanathar's Guide to Everything. I really honestly love this resource and highly recommend getting it if you haven't picked it up yet. The description down below has a link that will take you to a local game store's website where you can purchase the book for $10 off retail, which is awesome. The link also helps support your favorite halfling, so if you're gonna pick it up anyway, why not pick it up there? And of course, as always, if you have a local game store that has it in stock, make sure that you buy it from there. Support local first, always. Now, 
The next one is Brewer's Tools. These are probably one of my favorite just because of the fun things that you can do with them and the fun things I've seen my players do with it. So this one's important for me to tell you what the tools are because that's where some of the fun comes from. So Brewer's Tools include a large glass jug, a quantity of hops, a siphon, and several feet of tubing. Yeah, that's the fun part. So Brewer's Tools are so fascinating to me because they give you some things. First of all, they give you some additional insight when you're trying to make an intelligence or a history check over events that include alcohol. And what event doesn't include alcohol? Next, it allows you additional proficiency when you are making a medicine check to use alcohol to numb pain. Pretty cool. <laughs> Finally, and perhaps most usefully, this can give you advantage on your persuasion checks. A stiff drink can soften even the hardest hearts, and someone proficient in brewer's tools knows how to pour a drink that will get them just to the right place to make them talkable. I think that's really, really useful, especially with some of the NPCs that I make that are um, pretty closed off and uptight. And then finally, it, again, if you're a DM who really forces your players to do the survival aspect of the game, Brewer's Tools allows the player to be able to make potable water. Uh, they can do one gallon in a short rest or six gallons of potable water in a long rest. Useful. Coming in at number four, we have Cobbler's Tools. Now this isn't to make the delicious dessert. This is actually someone who makes shoes. And you may be thinking, why in the world is this on a list of awesome tools? I mean, I've never had my players even buy shoes before. I just assume they have them. Why do I care if someone can make shoes? Well, you're in for a treat. First of all, Cobbler's tools allow you additional insight when you're looking at enchanted footwear. Next of all, it allows you additional proficiency in investigation because footprints hold a surprising amount of clues. I mean, have you watched CSI or Scooby-Doo? Either one, they always go for the footprints. The footprints can tell you everything and in D&D, the same thing is true. If you have a cobbler in the group, you are sure to be able to track down that person based on those footprints. They can see exactly, you know, the size that they are, where they've been, all that stuff. And then two of the best traits for these tools. Number one, as part of a long rest, a cobbler can go and repair the shoes of the rest of the party. And this, for the next 24 hours, allows the party to travel for 10 consecutive hours without having to make an exhaustion roll. Very, very useful if you're trying to get somewhere quickly on foot. And then, as a cobbler, you can also create hidden compartments in your shoes where you can hide stuff. I mean, who hasn't had stuff stolen or wanted to hide something from the guards when you're sneaking in somewhere? This way, you can create a compartment in your shoe that can hold something three inches by one inch, and you make an intelligence check using your proficiency used from your cobbler's tools to determine the DC needed to find the compartment which can be incredible. Cobblers, who knew? And then last but certainly not least, we have Mason's tools. Mason is someone who lays brick and works with masonry, right? Like concrete, cement, stuff like that. As part of being a mason, you can add your proficiency to checks to try and determine the date of a building when it was built, who built it, and how long it's been ruined if it has been ruined. That's pretty useful for a lot of dungeon dives. There's always like looking at pillars, trying to figure out who was here. Masons, really good at that stuff. Next up, you have additional insight when inspecting stone structures. You can also spot irregularities in stone and brickwork to help you determine if maybe there's a secret door or compartment somewhere or a trap laid inside of something. And finally, your knowledge of brick and mortar allows you to spot irregularities in brick structures to find the weakest point. And whenever you do damage to that weakest point, your damage is doubled. 
can be very useful in certain situations. So there you have it. Those are my five most useful tools that you've probably never heard of in Dungeons and Dragons. I sincerely hope you encourage your players to use them and you find a way to, you know, maybe just serve them up to your players. And if your players do have proficiencies in these tools, now you have a better idea of how you can ask them to use them. Until next time, my friends, may your game have advantage. Halfling Hannah here, signing out.